This is a story of our faith from the 31st chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is a story of our faith. Back in the day, God led Moses to a mountaintop and gave him stone tablets with the law carved upon them. God gifted this covenant to the Israelites as the 10 best ways to live. Keeping the commandments equated to keeping the covenant. Breaking the covenant was not a good thing. The consequences vary depending on the circumstances. Sometimes breaking the covenant invoked God's wrath. Other times God's forgiveness moved to the fore, and at other times God's protection was withdrawn. Over the subsequent millennium, as people continued to break the covenant, God tried all three of these approaches as the people showed consistent faithlessness. Clearly, something wasn't working. Enter the prophet Jeremiah. He stands in the middle of a Jerusalem in ruins. The temple destroyed, the people scattered to Babylon and beyond. According to his analysis, all this the result of breaking the covenant God had written in stone. Now, unexpectedly, incredibly, improbably, in the midst of the ruins, God is about to do something new. God will write a new covenant, a new law, not on stone tablets, but carved within the heart of each person. Jeremiah points to a hope that arises from a deep yearning within God. No longer will the relationship be defined by rules and regulations prescribed by stone and religious leaders. The relationship will be defined by heart, by love. There is a profound difference between being guided by rules and motivated by love. When I started falling in love with my husband, Keith, my energy was boundless. There was a smile plastered on my face 24-7. When, we when I was getting ready for a date, I would spend hours preening, deciding what I was going to wear. And when I prepared meals, it was always geared to his palate. I found a myriad of little ways to show my love. And this love felt freeing like I was on a grand adventure. Now, 40 years later, maybe that energy isn't there all the time, although surprisingly quite often. But something deeper has carved itself within my heart. A few weeks ago, we sat at dinner doing some of the table church practices 
I asked one of the questions included in the booklet. Do you know anything about the story of your birth? A simple question, right? It was a question that took Keith to a place of pain. Pained relationship with his mother, pained for his family impacted by depression, pain for a childhood that had little joy and freedom, but many rigid rock carved rules. Maybe because my love for him is so deeply shaped my being, I not only felt badly insensitive about asking the question, I felt his pain. I felt his pain as though it was my own pain. When love dwells this deeply, there is a connection so profound that when something happens to one, it affects the other. It reminds me of the E. e. Cummings poem that we used in the Vesper service last week. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. At its most fundamental, this is what Jeremiah speaks about. The new covenant that declares, I will be their God and they will be my people, speaks of all-consuming forever love. In the core of God's being rests a passionate love for us, one that feels our pain and our joy, one that carries our heart in God's heart. This love aches for a response, a response of which we are capable. God, who is Christ, who is living love, calls us to let love shape the center of our living. This doesn't mean that the 10 best ways to live are out the window or that there are no clear laws that we are called to follow. No, it does mean, though, that these laws are built upon the foundation of love, with the bricks and mortar of love. Following these laws are acts of love, not motivated by fear of God's wrath or withdrawal. What might it mean to live with love at the center? Here's an example. Rafi, the well-known Canadian children's songster and advocate, has created a movement called Child Honoring. Child Honoring has as its focus the call to put children at the center of our deliberations and decisions for today and for the future. From that core emerges a philosophy, a vision, an organizing principle, a way of life that Rafi calls the children first way of sustainability. The philosophy has nine principles. The first one is called respectful love. The principle reads, Respectful love speaks to the need to respect children as whole people, to encourage them to know their own voices. Children need the kind of love that sees them. Respectful love installs self-worth. It's the prime nutrient in human development. Children need this not only from parents and caregivers, but from the whole community. People are invited to live out the children first, core commitment by living out these honoring principles. All the principles are based on the idea that if we make decisions according to how they affect children, then the child 
the environment, and the total well-being of the planet would benefit. War, poverty, economic disparity, ecological crisis would end. Or so Rafi argues. Utopian? Perhaps. Yet this love-centered approach to living carries the scent of the kingdom of God, a vision of the world that holds hope, possibilities for all people, and a respect for all life. In these times, talk of love can no longer rest in Hallmark cards or sentimental platitudes. Too much is at stake. We are connected. There is no separation between us and the other. There is no separation between us and the planet Earth. Jeremiah offers us a new law, a new covenant to consider. This covenant initiated by God invites us to be a people and a church who deliberately choose to act the way of love with all the pain, joyfulness, challenge, and hope that comes with that decision. Jeremiah promises that this is the way to new life. May it be so.